movement, William Buckingham, who um, w really was kind of a two-dimensional character in most of the, the daily news coverage. He was, he was the, the villain of the piece, so to speak, and there was really more to him than that. And uh, I, I was glad I had the opportunity to, to get into his story more often. I, I spoke uh, uh, in a lengthy interview with Michael Behe. Um, other folks, including the, the person who writes the weblog on the, the, uh, at this Discovery Institute, refused to be interviewed. Um, and and, and, and uh, as did uh, uh, some of the other leaders of, of the intelligent design movement. And, but when I couldn't interview them directly, and when they didn't testify, as a number of the witnesses who had originally said they would uh, come to court uh, ended up deciding not to, uh, I was able to use their expert reports, uh, their other writings, to try and represent what their views w w were and, and what their responses were to the to the allegations of the of the parents who sued the school district. So I, I would say that I made every effort and 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 uh, considerable effort to treat the uh, proponents of intelligent design fairly. And I think that's important because one thing that doesn't happen a lot in these conflicts is that the, the sides don't listen to one another. You know, they just want their own beliefs reinforced and. Uh, the kind of debate that went on in that courtroom is actually incredibly healthy. One thing the judge said to me after was, gosh, I wish I had let the TV cameras in to film this, because people would be blown away if they saw some of this testimony. Now, no offense to one of the ter attorneys in the case who's actually sitting here, some of the testimony would have caused this reaction, but uh, quite a bit of it was just riveting. And um, I think one of the writers who covered it said it was the, the science class you always wished you had when you were in school. And it was. It was, it was, it was amazing. Science was the star of, this, uh, of the proceedings, I think, and, and was uh, um, fascinating. Yes. You know, I, like, these, like these people that say you know, that humans and dinosaurs, among other things, must have existed or they must have been dinosaurs in the ark, too. Um, how do they uh, reconcile the fact that, you know, man is still here? I mean, with these uh, things running around, obviously man would have made it a very good snack. So just by virtue of them being here, like a T Rex or whatever, you know, you, you start to wonder whether man, why man did become extinct. Damn boat was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's there's a certain amount of good fortune in the in well, the, in, that, in the right? existence of if if um, current theories about uh, the er earlier Earth are correct, uh, had a uh, a large object not struck the planet and drastically changed the climate, we'd probably all still be dodging dinosaurs today. Although, if you talk to one of the experts. Um, in the case, Kevin Patey, and the, the, the bird evolution expert, he says, the dinosaurs are still here. We're just calling them birds. So uh, he says birds and dinosaurs are the same, which is an interesting idea. Well, I want to thank you again. It's been great uh, being here. And I guess we're, uh, we're doing some science. So were you with the school board or were you with the plaintiffs? <laughs> what? The plaintiffs.